All right, this is Comet 67P from the Rosetta mission where they went out to explore this comet with a, uh, a, a, a robot. And they landed on the comet and they're looking at the comet. Before that, they circled it a bunch of times. Now, what I want you to look at is, the, here's the structure. It has this neck, it has a bulbous head, and it has this spiky little bulbous thing on the other end. Now, they, they're trying to figure out what this is all about. Now. All right, what I want you to look at is these structures right here. You see these little things here? Now, those are not structures of craters or something like that. Those are the patterns of life. And this, I believe, you see this, and then this, and then this, and then that, and then that, and then that. These, I believe, are the layers of muscle. And I believe that is the internal structure that breaks off exactly at the place where tendons turn into muscle and I'm going to back this out and I'm going to show you why I say that and I think this is one gigantic tendon emplacement now you see this stuff here they're saying where did the sand and stuff come from sand is literally and I have made this in the lab sand is literally um, electroplated uh, well, sand is, is, is petrified cells, and that's what these are. These are the deteriorated petrified cells that are eroding from the deteriorating fleshy material, which is the, the weak stuff. This is the plagio stuff, which plagio clay stuff, which is tough, 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 tough. If this is what I'm thinking. Now, the stem in between is what brings the plagioclase which is embedded normally in a bone layer and it brings the plagioclase, let me back out of here a little further which is this stuff and these spiky, see these little spiky things all over it? those are what you find in plagioclase emplacements of tendons and that is what holds them into the bone, the bone would be like here then you go up into your rubber band that hooks it over into the flesh and that's what I'm saying this is alright this is from dev.biologist.com uh, .org now nicely done and, and, and these are not very well understood how these things are built but this is how they develop the tendons and this is that tendon ball that I showed you and that's the strap and as they develop they build minerals in here so that they can anchor the bone or, or, or the muscle or whatever is up in this area wherever this is going to invest into now the minerals start to get really flaky and and plagioclase and, and that's I can show you that in mine and then this begins to get tubular and, and a lot of vascular and cellular and, and, and because it's got to be flexible and then this gets extremely spiky and then they anchor solid as can be and then you get all that red stuff all around it that, that I showed you in my other thing and that's how they anchor and once they go bad they break in a certain place it's right outside of the tendon ball it, because there's like four or five different chemical transitions that, that I don't know if they fully even understand this yet but my stuff breaks in the exact same spot every time every tendon it just never fails and it's always in the transition between the extremely mineralized tendon as, as it goes into the gushier um, um, uh, you know muscular tissue Alright, now you're going to have to look a little bit and think a little bit about this. You see this structure right here? It's sort of a, a circle with a hole in the center. And this sort of is a circle with a hole in the center. These are some form of bundles or tendons. I, I believe they're tendinous material. But they form these little balls. You know, they're, they're, they're bundles. Now, I want you to look at this. Down here is Comet 67P. And I want you to look at those structures right there. You see those? I'm saying this is a tendon emplacement, and I'm saying that these are the same as the broken fibers that I just showed you on the specimen that I have here in my shop. Now, watch this. As I back up from this specimen, right, I'm going to back away from it or I'm going to twist around from it because this, this is amazing what happens. Now, as I move up the fibers 
all of a sudden, see them, they, they're like little, they look like boards, you know, and then all of a sudden, bang, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> now, this white stuff, you see that? That's mineral. These things are extremely mineralized. And they make these little patterns, you know, they're almost like little crop circles and things. But anyway, they, as, as you go up further, up to tendon, you get this, this material. Let me see if I can focus this in a little better. You see this material here? You see everything striated, and there's a. I have to block the light coming in from the side. Now, you see this reddish stuff? That's all starting. To, there's some kind of blood investment here, and this is a transition. And my stuff breaks at a certain spot, and every every one of them. I always wondered why. And I see this exact same structure in a giant's causeway in a lot of places, and I'll show you that later. Now, you see these things? This this is vascular stuff. That's blood. That's where the blood is 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 servicing these things. Now I'm going to go a little further up, and you're going to see what happens now. It says, okay, what are we going to do from the tendons? We have to make a transition into the muscle, and here comes the muscle. Isn't that something? And so you're going to have another sort of ten and here comes the muscle fiber, the black and the white, or you know it's brown or white or whatever color it is, but that's muscle fiber. Now, I'm going to home in on this a little better if I can. Now, you still see minerals in there and things, but it takes on this band of, um, of fibers, and they weave into each other, and then, and they still get service with blood here and there, and then it goes off that way, and it broke off on this end, too. But this is the identical, you see these things here? This is the identical structure you see on Mars, you see everywhere. And these are, are the blood service holes. And what that is, is iron. And iron rusts out of here, and that's why it's the red planet. And it's, it's what it is, what it is. I didn't make it up, it's just what it is. Okay, this is um, Comet 67P, um, and this is from a place called Cosmos News. And they're trying to explain uh, the um, occurrences and the structures and so forth. And, and, and just listen to this now. Listen to what they have to say. Investigator on Rosetta's Osiris instrument. They are really strange. The pits can be found clustered in just a few regions on the comet's surface. There are small groups of them on both the head and body of the rubber duck-shaped comet, but nearly all of them appear in the comet's northern hemisphere. Come all right, I want to just mention this. The reason for this is those circular structures are the product of um, tendons. On Rosetta's Osiris instrument have spotted dust jets shooting out of some of the deeper depressions, but those that are more shallow do not seem to be active. The authors explain that these large punctures could not have been made by impacts because they have the wrong size distribution and you wouldn't expect to see that many impact craters on a body as small as Comet 67P. They wondered if the pits might have formed as a result of the melting of frozen materials on the comet surface. Alright, these structures that you're seeing here, those are the patterns of, they're almost like um, uh, pine cone patterns. The patterns of the pine cones on the, the surface of the cone. and the other holes that they're talking about, the circular straight down holes they think might be sinkholes, those are actually vascular investments, um, blood vessels, veins, arteries, that type of thing. Okay, this is uh, on the Rosetta mission. This particular structure they're looking at, and he's saying, look at this, how white this is. And then now, look at these transitions coming down like this. Look at this specifically and look at this flat spot. Now look at the way this planes out and then you get this shape here coming around the edges. All the way around the edges. Now look at this stalk coming up similar to this. Okay now look at the the dusty sort of particulates that are around here as well. Now I'm going to show you a product of life which this is as well but I'm going to show you what I have here and I it can be examined to see if the same chemicals are there and this is it right here 
Alright, now let me put a light on this. Now I just showed you what you have there. Now, let me get this down carefully so this can be seen. That is that flat spot. Now as I rotate it down, you see these... Whoops, I can't... Oh, let me just do this with my finger. You can see these are the identical same structures coming down. If you look over here, well, as a matter of fact, you can see there's another stalk up here on the other side, exactly as the other one has. You see these structures coming down, and then you see the ball around, and that ball is this right here. If you can, it's hard to see this. Let me see if I can get a little better light in there. This stuff right here is a spiky plagioclase material and it is as hard as hard gets it's mineralized and that is the investment of a tendon this is a tendon assembly and when you get back up into this area this was in a, a apparently was burnt up for I don't know how but anyway that's how it happened there's a strap and it's a, like a rubber band, a round rubber band that's very, very vascular and very cellular. And it's boiled off, as you can see. But that is a flexible strap that attaches to this ball. And that's the stalk that it comes in on. And then that ball invests in bone. And that is what holds, whoops, that's what holds, the spikes hold it in. You see this, this whole thing is one ball. This ball right here, that's, that is the tendon ball. And, and it's fully understood, and I can show, I'm going to show you an anatomical uh, rendering of it. And all of the blood vessels are here. And all the other topography of that um, um, comet is, is, is life. And I, I have it, and I can show it, and then the chemicals will be the same. And all of this dusty stuff, that's not dust, and it's not uh, sand that they're talking about. That is the petrified cellular structure of skin and... All right, this is Google Earth. This is um, Utah, Arizona. Now, you see all these, I guess, how do they call them, buttes or whatever, these big tall structures in these flatlands? Look closely. Let me show you something. You see all this red stuff, how red it is out there? You see around these structures this, around the structures this red stuff? You see around them? Now let me show you a little closer. Let's pay real close attention to what that structure really looks like. And let's take a look at this one right here. Alright? You see what's coming out here? And then you see that circular pattern there? You see how perfect that is? You see how perfect that is? You see how spiky that is? It's like a little spiky looking thing. You see that? That didn't just happen by accident. That is a tendon emphasis point. That's exactly how they, enter, they, they invest. Same thing with this one, same thing with this. That is actually muscle fiber. And, I, and I, it appears that it broke this way and it eroded the stuff out. There is all kinds of plagioclase material this way. So, uh, and these are the um, muscle fibers, and they possibly, I believe these are muscle fibers. And these are the actual, if you looked in a, a, a textbook, it would look exactly like that. It has these little bands, and then it's covered by this little sheathing. Now, if you follow this out, you see where all the blood leaks out to, and it, it surrounds it. Now, look at this. This here is another one. Look at the structure of it. Look at the, this didn't just happen by accident, this perfect architecture with these little teeth looking things. Now look at this. Look at that. Nobody went up there and carved that. You see that? You know what that is? That's the tendon investment. That sweeps up from where this ball invests in muscle or I mean in uh, bone and then it transitions over a little of this a little of that and then it starts going up these little wispy pointy looking things. You see that? You see them? 
I have the same exact things. You see this structure right here? Look at you see these points, 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 points. They're all over. Points, points, points. That's that it's they're everywhere. Now, you see how look at these points, points, points. This is the way these transitions work. And that is a tendon entity. You see that stuff? That is the the, the the tendon fibers when they turn into tendon fibers. All right, this is from a huge fingertip that was CAT scanned and DNA tested, and it's proven 100% human, and it's completely obvious in the CAT scan, which was done by Jesse Garant and Associates. Excellent job, 3D CAT scan, and I will show you that. Now, here is the vein structure. Now, I'm going to go deep into this. Now, watch. Remember the thing that's up on uh, 67P, I think it is. The, now I'm going to try to go inside here. They call them Dragon Balls. You see them? There they are. They're all over the inside. And that's exactly what happens with blood. Blood crystallizes like that in, in like a, almost like a cellular manner. And, and that is the... All right, this is a similar surface that you see on 67P. All right, now, if you look at this here, and this is the this is 67P again, comma 67P coming in, and it's getting bombarded with radiation. And you look at where the jets are going. They're even coming out from the front and so forth. So I started thinking about that. Well, why aren't they trailing off behind? Well, this makes sense uh, because whatever is spewing out of here is coming along with it. There's nothing, there's no atmosphere here to hold the stuff back and for it to trail into. So, uh, you know, I can see it spewing out and as it just comes out of this mist, eventually it will overtake this stuff. But um, this I can explain. Now, I don't think though that it's water. I don't think that this is ice and water and these guys don't either. Um, this this uh, Rosetta continues to shatter dirty snowball mist. Uh, this is not water. Something else is going on here. This is radiation from solar bombardment of uh, vortex particles, which is uh, uh, their electrons is spinning at a high speed vortex. And something is going on here with that kind of a discharge. And they spew out of the dark side of these as well. And that I can possibly understand because these are vascular systems. There's all kinds of little vascular tubes in here. And if they do that x-ray uh, or however they can look through this thing, if they can look through it very well, I don't know what kind of detail, but if they can, they will see exactly what I'm saying. And there's going to be vascular networks and there's going to be striations of the hard muscle and the soft muscle and yada yada, it's going to be all that stuff. It'll be, it's all going to be there.